So histrionic personality disorder is just another name for hysteria. I just want to get that out in the front because I actually didn't know that until kind of recently. So, and I feel stupid for not knowing that, but I always sort of thought hysteria was some ancient thing that was in psychology, but there was this other thing called histrionic personality disorder. So I just want to let everyone know histrionic personality disorder is just another name for hysteria. Histrionic is like the adjective version of hysteria. Instead of saying hysterical personality disorder, they just decided to use histrionic personality disorder, probably because the word hysteria or hysterical is associated with, with other things now in the English language. But anyway, so now, now that you know that, I just want to say up front here that hysteria and histrionic personality disorder is extremely important to our field. I don't know if everyone knows this. It's, it's perhaps the most important diagnosis in the history of psychotherapy. One could even say that psychotherapy was founded on the treatment of hysteria. For instance, Freud's first patients were hysterical or histrionic. The history of hysteria goes all the way back to ancient Egypt and ancient Greece, which is crazy to think about. And many of these ancient ideas can still be seen in the current thinking about hysteria. For thousands of years, hysteria has been the cornerstone of psychotherapy and psychology, but histrionic personality disorder and hysteria are falling out of favor within the field of psychotherapy. So much so that it was almost left out of the newest diagnostic manual in 2000 or in 2013, the DSM-5. Well, today I'm going to talk about why it was almost left out of the DSM-5 and why it will probably be left out of the next DSM even though it has a rich history within our field. In this episode, I'm also going to talk about the history of hysteria and, his, and histrionic personality disorder. And the, his, the history is fascinating. I, I had no idea how interesting the history is. It involves Hippocrates and Plato and Aristotle and Freud and all these other people. I'm also going to talk about the symptoms of histrionic personality disorder the social context, the culture around it, why people develop it, what's the genesis of hysteria, what are the common presentations, what does it look like in people, what's the treatment of histrionic personality disorder, and other sorts of things I, I want to talk about. That is what I'm, I've, I've done a deep dive into this topic. I initially was just going to do a short episode on this, but as usual, when I get down a rabbit hole, I this, you know, this is, it's actually been, I don't know, like a month long rabbit hole of hysteria for me. I've been hysterical about history, his, hysteria. And so this is going to be a long one. So buckle up people. Welcome to the psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I am a therapist and a professor. This episode is just for patrons of the podcast. So if you're listening to this, and you're not a patron of the podcast, this episode will end before the content begins. If you want to hear the full episode on hysteria, you have to become a patron of the podcast by going to patreon.com. That's patreon.com. Patrons get access to all the premium episodes on their phones or on the Patreon page. When you become a patron, we'll tell you how to access the premium feed on your phone. And a portion of your monthly pledge goes toward various charities that we support. (laughs) 